88.5 WVUF in Fairfield, Connecticut, six minutes after the hour of six o'clock here at Fairfield University. This is The Upper Room with Joe Kelly, and I uh, want to thank everybody for bearing with us. You missed just uh, a great sound check and earphone check that, uh, you know, if you were here, you would have had a good laugh. But uh, we've got a really special uh, show planned for you uh, tonight. We've got some new music in the later part of the show. And uh, we also have our great friends, John Rosito and John Falzone. And we're here to talk about uh, a great art exhibition here at Fairfield University at the Regina Quick Center. It's Director's Choice, of which uh, John Rosito is one of the featured artists of the program uh, over there at Director's Choice. So welcome uh, the two Johns to WVUF once again. So, Hi, Joe. Nice to you. be here. And we should let our audience know, John Rosito, he's a guest, but he brought his own great meal and, and fed us once again with uh, chicken and uh, what, what else did we Good have? Meal. Good you meal. You had uh, potatoes and uh, green beans. Right. And uh, roasted chicken. I, I, I'm blessed because I had some good food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you guys, We're all about the food. You guys grew up with uh, great households of, of uh, cooking and everything. I hear all the stories about your mom's cooking and... What was it like? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> my mother would cook for an army because I had two brothers. Right. And uh, the the joke in the house was we, we never had lo- leftovers. And even if you weren't hungry, you ate until all the food was gone. Uh-huh. So, you know, she well, had a, she was a great cook. What was your favorite dish your mom made? Oh, I don't know. She, yeah. There's too many, so right? many. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and she was a great baker, too. So. Yeah. yeah, his mom was unbelievable baker. Every time he went over there, he had the uh, zeppola or uh, I she, can't even say the pizza. cream puffs, everything. And, yeah, and even if you weren't hungry, you ate anyway. Yeah, you you, yeah, you could have three helpings, and my mother said, "Why aren't you eating? Uh, have yeah. some more." You know, right. so that, when that's how it when goes. we used Actually. to run, like in the eighties, we used to run, uh-huh. and a lot of times we you'd lose weight when you ran. Right, right. no matter where we went. You look emaciated. You got to eat. We would just literally get off the table at each other's house, and, and we would have to eat. So it was the rule. I, I You know, I have a tough time saying I have such great stories like that growing up. I No offense against the, the cooks <laughs> at my house. but uh, It was you know, different. It was the Irish, you know. I understand. And, uh, yeah. But but uh, my mother was a little different and she didn't she didn't have um a lot of patience uh-huh. because she had these three monsters and plus <laughs> a husband that didn't, you know. So but she would cook. She would she we would have like lamb. Uh my father was a, a meat cutter by trade. Uh-huh. And so he would bring home these things with no bones on it. I mean complete lambs and roast beef and no bones. it was really good. <laughs> it was really good. And uh and she would cook. She had a lot of patience. She had a lot of not for us, but she had a lot of patience <laughs> to cook and stuff. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, we had a great time yesterday. The opening reception for Director's Choice over at the Quick Center, uh, led by Diana Mill, who has put together a great exhibition. And John Rosito, one of the well, featured artists there. And, and uh, tell, maybe tell the audience what was well, it like. Well, the first thing I have to say is a, 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 a huge thank you to Diana Mill for putting the show together. Because, she did a great uh, job. She did a fantastic right. job. And also to Chuck DeAngelis. For hanging all the artwork, and right. uh, he always does a great job. But yeah, it was a it was a, a a fantastic turnout yesterday. And anyone who loves art, just go and check it out because the uh, exhibit will be there until July sixteenth. So, okay, so it, probably as soon as they open up during the day, till bit, you know. Yeah, I, well, I don't have the exact hours, but uh, they're open every day. Okay. Yeah. And uh, but yeah. It, it's there till July 16th, and uh, my work is displayed along with four other uh, area artists, and uh, there's some really great stuff to see. So, right. very diversified show. Yeah, um, yeah. There's so many different, you know, aspects of of the art that they had. The uh, there was a couple of doctors there that their art, and then Dwayne, of course, from yeah, our uh, Corey, public safety. Yeah, right. But like I wanted to say to you, I, I've known John for over 30 five years now and i've seen his artwork i've seen what he does but yesterday you got a chance to see a diversified john rosito you got to see a lot of this new stuff which is unbelievable and a lot of our friends were trying to divvy up who's going to get what right right. they're not getting anything <laughs> but uh but his, some of his things the, the three-dimensional uh those 
boxes. Are, well, that's it, something new that I and it's just really started. good. Those scenes from Italy, John. I, I know you love Italy. It, yeah. it was, you know, it was my well, pleasure. Well, that's what inspired here. my latest work. Uh, mm. uh, my wife and I went to Italy uh, five years ago, right? And uh, I just, I just loved it. And uh, so I, I was inspired to do some art based on uh, the countryside in Italy. But uh, basically, I've, I've developed this. Uh, three-dimensional landscape painting which I build a shadow box around and that's there were three pieces like that in the show right, along that, with other yeah. things I've done in the past right. and then that, the hand of David I think that was right right just just very unique yeah just, well just uh, Michelangelo unique. was one of my favorite artists so uh, I took part of the David his sculpture and uh, drew it with nails so yeah. if you're <laughs> and you're and your fingers you are still attached to your hand, yes, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, I hit my thumb a couple of times. Right, once, right. But no, I mean, I, I I'm always trying. Welcome to, to my world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Welcome <laughs> to my world. Right. No, I'm always trying to think of something different and unique. So that was that. Yeah, I hope it came across. It was very yeah, it was very unique. Yeah, they, it, it's a nice gallery too. You go in there. It's, oh, it's a beautiful space. Quiet. Yeah. yeah. I always marvel at the what, what I know how talented he is, but I always marvel at his work because you're looking at, you know, some it used to be just a canvas, yeah, and then now there's this beautiful picture in the middle of this canvas, and he had one work of art that he did with the pen and ink, with the uh, James Cagney, and two people came up to me and said, "That's a picture of James Cagney," and I right. said, "No, that's pen and ink," and he said, "No." Okay, right. So, right. but it was it was pen and ink, and and well, John has uh, a lot of I, patience. It's it's actually pencil, but but it is you know that style. I'm sorry, I didn't, no, I'm sorry. It is. Yeah, pen, it was it's, it's pencil. pencil, but he it had me. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I was confused. There were some pen and inks. There were some pen and inks. So right, right. But yeah, no, the James sorry, Cagney. Pencil and ink. The James Cagney is one of the very first portraits I ever did. Right, and it was uh, pencil. But uh, th- I did well, thanks that. For correcting uh, me, no, that would be erroneous. <laughs> <laughs> I did we that are, back yeah. in 1977. Yes, you did. And your so, son loves that. Your yeah. Son. Well, well, that's why it was in the show because he told me I had to put it in. So, I mean, thank I you. wasn't thank shocked. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I, mean, I wasn't and shocked thank, when I walked I, in there. I right. have to say thank you to my my wife and my kids because. Oh yeah. They, Absolutely. They, you know, Absolutely. they put up with me. You know. Oh, I mean, you could you tell know, you, they, you know, talking with Linda and every, you know, you could tell your family was really happy for you. Well, they, too. you yeah, know, they, too. they, yeah. they believe in me, they do. right? Even when I don't believe in myself, oh. so that's, you know, they do, and they love you very much. I mean, having me. been around yeah. you for a while, you can just see how they marvel at your talent, but they love you as, as who you are, which is a very good person. And well, uh, you, you. Can, it comes you out, and I'm not just saying that because right. you're sitting here and you could beat me up. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, but it, it's true. It, just your your love of painting is not unlike your love of family. You put whatever you put into what you do, you put it in, and I and I appreciate that as a friend. Well, I appreciate I, can, I appreciate that. Thank you. And Joe, right. there was a lot. Of, you're welcome. There's a lot of people there yesterday from all walks of John's life. Right. All yeah. Wa- right. His, his father-in-law, his mother-in-law. Right. You can see how tight. Right, the family right. is and and it makes yeah, you feel it, good. it was it, uh, it was good. it was nice to see everyone uh, that in- came in-laws out in-laws and sister-in-laws, yeah, exactly, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, nephews and nieces, yeah, and yeah. Um, some even acknowledged me, which was nice. You know, it was <laughs> <laughs> very afraid, very uh, yeah, they you, were very yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, if you just nice. tuned into WBOF, uh, John Rosito, one of the featured artists at Director's Choice, uh, the uh, Quick Center, the Art Gallery over there, uh, through July sixteenth. July 16th. July yes. 16th. And uh, his great buddy, Mr. John Falzone, great friend of ours as well. And uh, you guys, a lot of people uh, excited that you guys were coming on. Ah. Listen out there, I want to say hello to Kathy Tuttle. Yes. And uh, Nick's recouping from his uh, rotator cuff surgery. Oh, hope yeah. he's okay. Yeah. Hope he's yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah my him. brother-in-law, Nick. Yeah. Nick? Nick. Nick. Nick I saw yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He looked great yesterday. Yeah. I, I guess that hand. punch in the arm wasn't good. <laughs> I <laughs> shook his <laughs> at the end. He goes, no, nah, don't hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> he, really? Yeah, I know. He had surgery on his shoulder. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Norwalk Why? Hospital. He was he was raving about the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, whether he was looking at me, <laughs> right. he was looking at me. I actually, believe it or not, I got in a 10-minute discussion about hunting with Nick. Oh, oh there, there's always oh, going to yeah, be yeah. something, something about in hunting. The world has no, no, yes. and I think I, I uh, you know, I interviewed him about hunting. Well, you, you yeah, did You're he tell you? Well, us. I, just let me ask you one thing. 
Uh -huh. Did he tell you how many uh, boxes of am ammunition he has? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I was scared to ask. <laughs> <laughs> nice guy. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, nice guy. Uh, yeah, definitely a nice guy. So he's oh, uh, and you know, we saw so John and I saw someone from our past. Uh huh. And it was a shocker because John runs over to me and says, "John, John, you know who's here?" I said, "No, who's here?" He says, "Doctor Turchek." Now, Doctor Turchek was an English teacher at Wright Tech when right. we went to. Now, John and I graduated Wright Tech in 1973. And I I haven't seen Dr. Turchik since then, and I'm sh I don't know if you have. I saw him once at a 15 year reunion, and I think you were there too. But I don't know if you ran into him that night. So the last time I might have seen him was over 20 something years ago. So and Dr. Turchik was there. Dr. It was David great Turchik. to see great to see him, yep. you know, and uh, got to reminisce a little bit. So w and what's he doing now? Well, he's retired, and he's the kind of guy I had a chance. To, you know, very few times in life you have a chance to come with a guy that made a, a difference in your life. Mm -hmm. He was an English teacher that cared. There are many teachers like we have here at Fairfield. There's professors that care and there's uh, teachers that you run into and you know workers, fellow workers sometimes, if you're lucky enough to, to have co-workers that you've worked with for years. But this particular teacher was made a... And I told him, I got to tell him what a difference he made in my life because he believed in me and he believed that you weren't ready yet. You're in high school, you're 17 years old, you're not, you're going to grow into something. Mm -hmm. And I, he, he saw that in me at 17 years old. And I didn't grow into that until two weeks ago, but I, <laughs> I'm okay now. And it was wonderful to see him, and I got a chance to say thank you to him. Right, right. That was, it was a wonderful day, and got to see John. He didn't, John did not have him, so, right. um, but you're all the But I knew of him. I knew, knew of him. him. Yeah. Everybody knew him. He yeah. was different. Right. And that's what made him great, as he wasn't afraid to be different. Hey, so and, uh, to say the least, we had a we had a great time. Yeah. Wonderful, day. Was wonderful we're, day. We're actually going to take a short break, take care of some public service announcements, but uh, we'll be back here at eighty-eight point five WVOF. And uh, John Rosito and John Falzone are with us, and uh, we'll be with until seven o'clock. Stay tuned. I knew I was stuck at this kid's house for the night, but those guys snuck up on me to try and pull the hand in a bowl of warm water trick. Well, that was enough for me. I went downstairs to sleep in the basement, even though it was pitch black. I left my sleeping bag upstairs, and that was a mistake, because it was freezing. I think it was probably the longest night of my life. To read more about the sleepover, check out Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Last Straw by Jeff Kenny. Explore new worlds and check out more cool books at your local library. And visit read.gov, brought to you by the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. The full moon lights the silver rails winding around dark mountains and over steep gorges of jagged rock and one freezing cold rushing black mountain river. I wish there was enough time to describe all of the funny twists and turns that led up to now, but there isn't enough time because there's a ticking clock and the two passengers we care most about don't know anything about it. To see what happens next, visit read.gov to read The Exquisite Corpse, a riveting adventure pieced together by John Sheska, Shannon Hale, Daniel Handler, and other popular authors. Explore new worlds. Read. Brought to you by the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Back here at WVOF, John Rosito and John Falzone, uh, great friends growing up and still great friends. And uh, John Rosito was uh, still his featured artist, one of the featured artists, five artists. Uh, Diane Mill has put together Director's Choice, Dwayne Corey, from public safety here who has a every you know all the artists have their own uh style different yeah. style and uh you know Dwayne has uh diff you know you can see actually through uh some great press if people want to go online to ctpost.com different techniques and yep. he was talking about it the Connecticut Post uh uh Phyllis Borges, Boris right I think her name is for the the, the uh, article in the Connecticut Post uh you're yeah, you're right, Joe. Phyllis Boris. Right, right. Staff writer for the Connecticut yeah. Post. The uh, Stratford Star, the Stratford Trumbull Star. Times. I think it was the Trumbull right. Times, the Stratford Star. So I, and I, Stanford I, I, Advocate. John just said the Stanford Advocate. Right. But the, uh, but the article in the uh, Connecticut Post is great. It's uh, actually like two, three pages. And it has uh, pictures of uh, each artist's work and a little description of what they do. So... Uh, that was in yesterday's paper. And, Joe, uh, to yeah. me, when I read in a paper that, you know, and John, they mentioned that John works in the mailroom here. And, right. and uh, of course, you know, being a co-worker. Right. It makes me feel good that, like, you know, look, you look at Fairfield U. It's diversified. You're not just a, a mailroom worker. You're not just a carpenter. You know, you, you 
we have other lives too, and and this school is, is big in our life, but but we have other things that we uh, do also, and of course mine is you know uh, volunteering and things like that, and being a scutch to my wife. But other than that, <laughs> you know, being a pain in the neck. You got to teach me the Italian lingo before I go on the air. Yeah, scutch is a pain in the neck. Scutch is a pain in the neck, and I do it well. I do <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got a but, lot of um, practice. But it just shows the diversification on campus. Right, and it's not just John, and it's not just. Um, there's so many people that do other things and they have hobbies and stuff. So it, I'm glad that they pointed that out in the paper. Yeah. Well, it's nice yeah. to have someone recognize your talents and appreciate what you do. You know, right, right. I could see even it. outside oh, yeah. of work. You know? Right. Yes. You, so you could see like because it's nice to do comments. what you do well, your right. job well. But it's also nice that you have other things that you know you're involved in too. Right. Exactly. So that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Like you have this show. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Maybe right. not after this show. But you know, you yeah, you do you very know, well. You have a very don't. good voice for this. Actually. Oh, thanks. He's going to be losing oh, right. listeners <laughs> yeah, yeah, as yeah. we speak. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, something uh, when John was on, uh, which he comes on every year to talk about, really a big thing he organizes uh, the Strident Stags, the MS Walk at Sherwood Island this year. John participated uh, each and every year. Uh, let's give a, a recap on on. Uh, this year, 2011 uh, MS Walk. Well, as you know, Judy, uh, Judy and I were co-captains for over 20 years. And since her retirement, um, we she still does the walk. But basically, I'm the captain now. Um, John Rosito and I go back to the very first walk at uh, in Bridgeport. And there were so many people there There was um, that used to work here that helped out at that walk volunteering they didn't know that morning that they were going to volunteer but they came up they came there to uh, walk and next thing you know they're volunteering um and that was wonderful to have them there um matter of fact uh phyllis fitzpatrick nancy habits they were part of that first team and they ended up walking but they before they walked they ended up volunteering because we had so many walkers that first year Mm -hmm. but to bring you up to date uh this year had almost 40 walkers again and we raised um, over three thousand dollars just that one team, and so far to date, though that walk in Sherwood Island has raised uh, one point three million dollars, and uh-huh. their goal was to raise one point two million dollars. So we're doing good. Yeah, we, we did great. very well, and it goes <clears throat> to research and it goes to um, you know to fund programs and things like that. And you need the programs. You need the programs for the families. You can't leave the families out because they're a big part of you reacting with this disease of course multiple sclerosis is the disease of the central nervous system which affects everything and um and there's a lot of gamuts to it there's a lot of like like i'm not afflicted that you can see Mm -hmm. but i have my limits and things like that that i know about and and um but it's something you can live with but there are people that are not as fortunate and you you can end up you know debilitated um so it's nice to keep the families together. It's wonderful to keep the family, and you need that because it's straining. Well, I, I was talking with your friend Casey, who, who joined you a couple of years ago, and yeah, she asked was, how her mom was doing. And she she says, "Oh, she's using a new device." And she, she was loves the device, right? Right, loves the device. Oh, and this that? device um, does something to the um, your body to make the uh, to make your stimulate your legs so that your legs do everything that your mind's telling it to do uh-huh. which is sound like a very obvious thing but when you have multiple sclerosis it's not because your brain doesn't get that connection by that device on her leg it sends the impulse to, to move that brain. leg yeah. and it and yes and it helps immensely and she's mm. having a really she's having some people can't use everything like the the uh, the uh, thing that I take the once a week shot that I take intermuscular some people have very very bad reactions to it Mm -hmm. uh other people can't take it at all because it makes them very very sick i'm not too fond of taking a needle but it does keep me okay and it's been for 11 years with this needle now so so one thing works for one person another thing works for another person so we'll get this we'll we'll get this year how do you uh deal with extreme temperatures like the heat and uh cold heat not good uh, extreme, extreme cold is not good either. It works the same. But extreme heat uh, is challenging. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can get by. I'm a little quieter and a little, uh, as you you wouldn't believe it. Wow. But I, yes, <laughs> so that's the thing. You want me to shut up? Put in the heat. Uh, I'm a little more, I have to think about a lot of things more uh-huh. because the heat drains you more. You get a little more lethargic. But I'll take it. I mean, I, I'll, I'll take it. I, I um, 
you know, I mean, even working outside doing the uh, the construction that we had to do for the for the grounds for the yeah. um, uh, handicap units and all the things that we do for graduation, it's a little challenging. But we, you know, you, you do what you can. Um, as long as you choose to work, you have to do what you do. And, and I do. I think I do it well. Right. Um, mm-hmm. I love what I do. I've always worked my hands, and I, I love what I do. So it helps. It helps a lot. And I work with some good people too. John Powell's home. John Rosito are here on WVOF with us until top of the hour at 7 o'clock. And, uh, you know, our listening audience missed out on a great, great uh, food prepared by good. John Rosito. It was good. Chef extraordinaire. <laughs> very good. <laughs> to recap, <laughs> it was. secret it was recipe, which is, he has the recipe. Right. Yes, but he can't tell us. No, can't I can't tell, tell you where I got it. No. He can't say where he got <laughs> it. But it is good, though. But right, good. right. Now, now, getting back to the... Uh, the director's choice art exhibition um obviously you had to choose you know what you were going to be allowed you know that they gave you parameters mm-hmm. and what, what you could bring and how much space you had tell us into the decision making for that well uh originally diana uh you know she asked me if i wanted to be in the show and i said of course and uh you know originally she told me i could put in about five pieces so uh I I didn't think that was enough, but, you know, a lot of artists do huge works, and I, I guess she was afraid that, you know, with the five artists being in the show, right. she would run out of space. But as time went on, she realized that my, my works are on a smaller scale, so little by little, it was bumped up, and I ended up with having 16 pieces in the uh, exhibit. Right. And and like I said, I've, I had pieces going as far back as 77 Mm -hmm. to to this year so and it's a wide range of of uh mediums and and styles over the years i've developed you know i started with pencil drawings and then i went to pen and ink colored pencil portraits and now i'm i'm doing the 3d uh landscape painting so i i i originally told her i would love to put in a variety of my work and Mm -hmm. and she so I want to get the different materials. I know people may not be able to get conceptualized like w- what it's going to look like, but uh, well, the, the process of, of of building the three D yeah. landscape. Well, I I start with uh, foam core board. Mm-hmm. It's a you know it's like a almost like a styrofoam, right? Thin thin layer of styrofoam, and I'll cut shapes and I'll build the uh, landscape with that. And when I have that all laid out. I take uh, something called plaster cloth, which is a piece of cloth that has plaster infused into it. And when you wet it, you can mold it. You, I lay it over that foam core board, and mm-hmm. I mold the landscape. And then there's also uh, a material I use that's a sculpting material, where I'll make trees and, and flowers out of that. And when that's all laid out, I'll, I'll, paint, I'll paint the uh, landscape. And then build a shadow box to hold it because the image, you know, it's coming off the canvas. So right, right. I have to build a shadow box. And that's it in a nutshell, really. Yeah, well, it, and I must ahead. say, John has been generous over the years. John has sold some of his paintings and works. But he's also, when I years ago, when for multiple sclerosis, mm-hmm. has donated many pieces of art that there's a lady at my church that still talks about that artwork <laughs> you did Just wonderful scape wonderful flowers um and he's very generous with that and uh you know it comes from who he is right he's right. a generous person and i don't want to embarrass him but he's over the years has donated <laughs> many many of those quality works to you know to well it's a it's for a good cause and i and i don't mind and, donating wow. the work i i appreciate that that's, that's for sure i do appreciate that now, now which piece that you had in that art gallery if you gave it away to a random person there yesterday you'd have trouble coming home at night uh your wife linda oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> any one? one of them because uh <laughs> i i think i've told you in the past when whenever i finish a piece of art my wife will always look at me and she'll say you're not going to sell that, are you? Uh-huh. <laughs> so, gets, like I said before, it, it gets personal. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. real personal. You know, right. I wouldn't mess with Linda. But I have, to, I have to promise her that if I sell something, I'll make another one to right. replace it. Right, you know, because right. 
Yeah. And the family, you know, the, John in the article talked about how his brother, both him and his brother used to paint, uh, not paint, draw. but he used to draw together. <clears throat> it was a wonderful thing they did. But now John's son is theatrical. Well, the- theatrical is not the word. He is an artist himself with uh, theater art and uh, not only theater art, but like with uh, the camcorders and things like that and television. Yeah, he's and his probably going to uh, major in media. I think he's leaning I can see that, that way. Because he's very and, creative. And Lauren, my daughter, Absolutely. is uh, a, a studio art major. Oh, and she had right, some wonderful right, work yeah. in the Lukash Gallery. That's right, yeah. Which and she was, was uh, one of the featured last year. Oh, right. I'm sorry. No, she no. was one of the featured uh, artists in the Walsh last year. So here we are looking at Lauren's, the junior. Right. All that work for all those students. Right. And now here we are. I think... So I guess what's next for you is a Lukash, because I guess they're <laughs> following each other. Well, I'd love to do something with my daughter oh my together. God. You both that have would a lot of great. work. Oh, yeah. You know, if we works. could collaborate on something, and, and that that would be... Who's uh, Lukash? Do you guys know? I who, who I know there's a person, Lukash, but I, right. don't, I don't know the history. Right. But I think he donated the space over in Loyola. Oh, okay. And uh, I, I'm not... Yeah, so for anybody who doesn't know that and it's on campus, gallery is right. And it's a Luke, it's an actual gallery, yeah, not yeah. in the Quick Center. Right. But it's in it's in, the, in it's, an oil. Oil. it's a nice space. Oh yeah. It's uh it's a very good space which the students use a lot. Right. They get to show their right. work and actually that's where Diana Mill first learned of my work. Yes. Because years ago I took a class here mm-hmm. and after the class we were able to display our work in the Lukash. Right. And she saw my work there, and that's how she. Oh, okay. And it has features right. some. Right. It yeah. has features some well-known artists uh, recently, like th- I guess that the village in Sudan, and and there were some famous works that came in and out of there too. And then plus, Cor- uh, Dwayne was yeah, over there with his added. works right. and yeah. his tribute to the uh, the, the, uh, the Negro Baseball. Leagues. Right. Oh, which right. was one. Did you get a chance to see that? No, no. He was asking me if I It was actually, spectacular. Actually, right. I read that it's uh, now in the Bridgeport Library. It's a permanent. I've, oh, it's, okay. Yeah. So that, that's a right. tribute to the Lukash to, to start yeah. that work. Right. And, you know, and, and it went over there now. Right. right. And right. he did a really great <laughs> job. He did a tremendous job. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we're going to take a short break. I know uh, you have some other things you want to talk yeah, about. We'll s- and uh, John Falzone, John Rosito, Director's Choice over at the Quick Center. Go there. It's there till July 16th. You will not be disappointed. You'll definitely be enlightened. So we'll take a short break and come back with the fellas in just a few. Um, he said you think it's going to last forever. And this is rough. He's your friend. He said, this, is, this has been the best 12 years of my life. I wouldn't have missed this for anybody. Now, I was okay, actually, until I went into the clubhouse, and the coaches are sitting in Tori's office, and they are watching this. And the tears that you hear in my voice are coming down the faces of the coaches in mm-hmm. that coach's room. Well, Susan, um, in life, unfortunately, all good things come to an end. Joe's had a phenomenal 12 years six world series appearances four championships and 12 postseason appearances in 12 years and 10 division winners and he has become large in life he's going to the hall of fame he's made a lot of money he has great security for ally and for andrea ray and um and one more thing that i can say on the air I don't know if he wants. I think he does, but I don't know if he wants it. If he's not back with the Yankees, when the inevitable coach, uh, managerial openings occur, he'll get his pick. Right now, nearly 30% of U.S. students aren't finishing high school. In many places, it's even higher than that. And fixing it is a responsibility that we all share. This is President Obama, and I urge everyone to take responsibility for encouraging the high school students in your communities, to support them, challenge them, and do whatever it takes to help them make it through. Do your part by going to boostup.org and giving a student the boost that's needed to make it to graduation. A message from the U.S. Army and the Ad Council. Hands can do incredible things. All right, we're back here. And uh, John Rosito and John Falzone. And... uh, Go ahead. I'm at a loss of words. I'm a, <laughs> <laughs> he's featured. It was good to see you and, and your wife there yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah. We had a support, great time. You support yeah. that also. Yeah, you guys are friends. So, uh, hey, it was uh, John did some great work. We're there to support John. 
And uh, we hope the community, and if you're listening on the internet and you're making a trip down here to come down there, come out and support the arts. And it's, it's just great. I mean, it was a, a real nice environment. I know I don't go to art exhibits every day of the week. And no. it was just great. No, you it, take it your was time. unique. And plus, you yeah. know some of the artists. Right, and, right. Um, and then the other good part of that was John brought let them uh, know. some of his bishkot. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah it always, Which was always good. Kind of <laughs> we always and then there was some cheese there. We always got to eat. You have to understand, there's always an underlying thing. They had some killed wine, too, I heard. Killed? Yeah, there was killed. Killed or yeah. chilled? <laughs> 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 no, no, no. It was I chilled. Didn't see any of it was that. chilled to yeah. death. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no, you weren't there when I was telling no, the story. No, thank you. Uh, I didn't oh, see so, any of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah, that we wouldn't help me one. out too much. And the food, though, the food is good. Right, right. Actually, right. I got one of the last pieces of bishkot, by the way. Oh, really? Because one of our did other you have a wrestle a little away from somebody? I had to wrestle away from one of our other yeah. friends. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but I won, so yeah. But I think good. it's a nice gallery. You can, you know, take your time. Even uh, many people, everybody's like, "Wow, this is a lot of people yeah. for you know yes. Father's Day and everything." Yes. And people, but you still felt comfortable to go well, around. That's and, what I, yeah. I I was shocked by space. the amount of people that showed up because it was Father's Day, and even when. Uh, Diana told me the date, you know, a year ago when we were going to, I, I, I looked on the calendar and I said, wait, wait, that's Father's Day. So I mentioned it to her and she says, no, it's, it's all right. I've, I've had other things on Father's Day and it, and I've always had a good response. So, and, and she was right. It was. Plus it wasn't raining and plus it, it was just very good. It was just, oh, yeah. it was just, and it's a wonderful space. Like I, I was mentioned before, just a wonderful space. Right. And to see so many, like, again, <clears throat> diversification was, the with your own artwork, there was, like, diversification. But well, seeing the different artists and their techniques, and to watch the artists look at the other artists' work. Right, right. That was unique. I went behind a few artists that were looking at other artists' work. Well, you, you, always have to, you always have to case out the other guy, you know, I mean... You gotta size up the other guy. I understand. You know, it's almost like when we played softball, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, right. trying to figure out what the other team was gonna do when we did. Oh yeah, and we a still lot didn't of practice. Help us. Yeah, but oh, you know, it's a yeah. problem with artists because I, I'm well, I, well you at least for me, I right? Mean, I'm always, I always think that my stuff is not up to par. Oh, my you know, God. but I think that's, I think that's part of a little bit of insanity. <laughs> yes, because but I can see that though, because you always think you probably think you could always do better, maybe. Well, but I can't. Don't go by me, because I think you did really good. I think you did terrific. Well. So did most of the people that were there. But there was a no. There was. I mean, everybody that I met was like in awe of what they saw, especially mm -hmm. that three D stuff. Right. I mean, yeah. it was just you know it was. Well, thank you. It was I a mean, good I, I. It was a good technique. I had to bump it up because I knew a lot of people that were coming to the show. You know, have seen my stuff. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do something different, and I think I so so what I so what's <laughs> I, I I would agree. What, with what, you. what do you have in the, the the lab ready to for for future plans? I you I, have to I you know go on inspiration. Well, on the same lines as a three D uh, landscape, I was telling one of my uh, nieces actually that m my next project is to build one of these three dimensional uh, landscapes and actually put lights inside of it oh, like okay, uh, yeah. like maybe uh doing something about uh the brooklyn bridge or or some something like that but actually building something behind the canvas to shine light through it you know so i mean that's right. just something that's floating around in my head it's but, always you know. it's always <laughs> right and speaking well, of the brooklyn bridge johnny jr is probably crossing it by now. oh yeah well yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i hope Mr. he's in the car well, he's a uh, he's a professional uh, oh extra, he's professional extra. He's oh, I'll just tell you a little bit. We're right. talking about my son, John Michael, yes. who uh, has this uh, bug right now about getting into movies and television shows. And Thursday night he was on the set of the show The Big C. Mm -hmm. Saturday he was on the set of Men in Black Three. Wow! And today he's on the set of Boardwalk Empire. HBO. So he's yeah. uh, he's getting himself out and there. And that's just the beginning and of the week, right? He's probably right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <up gigs laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. That was the weekend. Well, like right, his sister right, says, right. he's got to start saying no because every every call he gets, he's get like, oh, out. yeah, he's gung-ho oh, yeah. and wants to go. I I mean, he had to leave 3.30 this morning uh -huh. to be in uh, Rockaway, New York at 5.30 5 a.m. But so if they say, hey, we, we've got a, a, a role for you. Oh, he's there. But he's if you there. Think I mean, about a speaking it, role on Hollywood, 
he's there. He's there. But if he's you think there. about it, if you're you're young and you have the energy, and he's a good student, he's doing right. work here. Yeah. Of course, he's taking the summer off. I think. Um, but you but you think about it. If you have time now, you can do things now. Right. You now's the time him. to do it. Right. right. Got to do them. And just just like you're still. On the uh, the expanding roster for the Mets as, as they're uh, it w- <laughs> they would catching. have to expand that roster <laughs> on a line that you couldn't even see. I know the catching situation this year is a little solidified on the major league level, but you're you you're ready to fill in whatever call. Anytime right? I'm called, I, you know I would always give my best, and uh, I think I'm now the 48th string catcher for the New York Mets. They know of me, but 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 you know you've been known to go in the batting cage throughout the years to practice on your swing. Do you have oh, you yeah, been going yeah. in the cage? If a you lot? ever see me. Swing, you know, I I need a lot of practice. Oh, well, I, I, well, I, I never see a private matter. I've never seen him use the pine tar, though. No, oh, no. you don't use you the know, pine tar? No, no, no. Batting, batting gloves? gloves, batting glove. I used one, probably was the wrong hand. You did, <laughs> <laughs> no, because because the guy that I borrowed it from, you know, he needed it. <laughs> Do you actually, oh, no, go ahead. This was at the fantasy camp. I used somebody else's glove. Oh, it glove. is a fantasy. Yeah. It was fantasy, fantasy camp. Yeah. yeah fantasy, fantasy camp. And camp. I wanted to be like everybody else. I said, I can do this. Not so good. They got hits. I didn't. But oh, hey, you, you, know. you, try, you try. I got one hit. One hit. How about, do you, uh, do you got a good, you dig in? You, you, oh, you I don't. Sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> this, you, you learn real quick that digging in is not exactly what you want to do. You huh. learn that you give a little space. You know the thing about putting the bat across so that you know you can reach the whole plate? Oh, yeah, yeah. They were talking After about you do that, the other day. you take another step back. <laughs> this way you know they're not going to hit you. But there were some guys that got plunked down there, but I wasn't one of them. Oh, okay. And I yeah. didn't call <laughs> for it. And as a catcher, I didn't call for it either. So Oh, oh you never did it. Never no. called for it, no. Wow. So uh, huh. John Falzone, that was uh, – I don't know how we got on to that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 it's always no, no, no. I, I think I instigated it. We like bouncing around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, I know Nick said, uh, "Oh, John and John coming on to do the, the their their routine." You know, you guys <laughs> always you guys bounce right off each other. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So well, uh, we're never at a loss. I mean, we like I said, we he's my dear friend, and um, you know there are differences. He has talent. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He, we do have differences. the gift of gab. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. When John and I first saw each other, uh-huh. you know, we, we didn't really, well, he didn't talk that much, but I did. Right. It's I know, the same it's, way now. It's the same you way know. now. 35 <laughs> years later, it's That's the same. Strange. But I will, I will say John is, is a great audience because what he, we're good for each other. Right. Because we laugh at, we, we're fond of what the other one does, and uh, it's real. Mm-hmm. We don't. If nothing is made up. I mean, there's, there's, there's yeah. nothing that's made up. And um, I know if I needed something, John would be there. And he has, him and his family has always been there for me. And he's still waiting for me to do anything. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I, I'd like to think that I'd always he be there. He shows up. Right. You know, he shows up. Yes. To whatever I'm doing. You know, like the. Want it or not, and I, I you show know, up. I have to entice him, though, with the food. You know, that's, that. it's the like. O- that's prerequisite. It. You know. Right, it's like right. throwing the line in the water with the worm right, on right, the end. Right. Of, you, know, the you mentioned gonna, the Scotty yeah. weeks in advance. See, I, I, I throw the hook in, right. and I reel him in. If there's no, right. on that hook. <laughs> and yesterday was a, a, a food uh, delight, right? Oh. You started uh, Father's Day off over uh, at a diner or a restaurant? With my father, we uh, we celebrated uh, Father's Day, and my older brother and I went down to see my dad. Went to church, which it seems now lately it's been uh, what we do. You know, there's a lot of things. He's 84 now, thank God, and and um, there's not a lot of things you can do. But one of the things that, that brought us together was the fact that we were going to go to church together, right. and, and then we went out to a diner, and that's where it got <laughs> crazy. That's where you got, you ordered Ajita. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it seems to come with every meal. Have a meal. plate of Ajita, please. Uh, <laughs> my, father, my father's very unique. My father is quite the showman when you go to <laughs> order food. Oh, okay, yes, yeah. he's very good. And he'll tell you exactly what he wants, <laughs> uh-huh. where he wants it on a plate. Right. Oh, oh yeah. Just, but, but, it's, right. but, I, but I am blessed to have him in my life still. And um, it was good to be with my older brother. And, and, uh, and then went to see John. We had a great day. It was, right. it was a, it was a great day. Then you went over to the Irish Festival. Yes, and that right. was very right. good. That was right. very right. good. Uh, a lot of good food, a lot of wonderful music. There, there's, there's a beat. Uh, wonderful, wonderful music. Was there anyone uh, from the university that performed... At the because uh, I know well, Khan, Khan, um, 
I think he was performing on Friday. This yes, uh, and I missed him. I've, said, I've yeah. seen him there. He's wonderful. Right, what's right. the name of his group? Do you remember? Oh, oh I'm sorry, God. I should know this. Kel- is it Celtic the Kicks? Celtic Not the Kicks? Celtic Kicks. Oh. That's another band. Oh. But I forget what Khan's. It's an Irish name. It's an it's an I it's an Irish name, but I can't think of the of the name what it is. But I know and Khan's gonna hate me for yeah. this. But uh, but he's very good. He does television shows <laughs> and radio shows, promoting you know with the Irish music and oh, stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. I think he's I in think there with his sister and a couple of other the relatives. Gaelic American Club. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if I can get I can't get it. He's performed yeah. on campus a few places too, like for the staff association. He did a few things and. Um, just a, he's a very gifted artist too. He can sing. I mean, he's got a wonderful voice and he plays well. And I can't yeah, think of the name of the band. And I'm sorry. Times. Yeah, but it'll come to me when I'm driving home. Wow. All right, well, right, right. That's not gonna help the show out though. All right, <laughs> what was it, what, how about the food over there? What would you eat over there? I had Italian pizza free. <laughs> Oh, they were selling it too? Can't make it up. They call it fried dough, so I ate it. No offense <laughs> to, to our Irish friends. No, they were wonderful. It was good. Think, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm partially Italian food too. <laughs> well, I liked it. I, I, they had, they had everything. They had a lot of different uh, foods, all different nationalities. Right, right. So I, that's why I like it too. That's why I like and it. It's, also. And it's, and it's, and the music was wonderful. Fest, three days, right? Yeah, I yeah, believe so. I was only there for right. yesterday, but right. um, and, and I heard uh, a couple kids try to break into the beer truck over the weekend. <laughs> I read it in the paper. <laughs> Did you read that? No, I yeah, didn't, but I but heard it. Yeah, yeah. God yeah. bless. I, yeah. I don't understand. I, I never put a damper on a nice festival. <laughs> we'd, have, we'd have put a, the old <laughs> throw the water well, on it. Hey, when's the Italian festival coming to town? Well, I we don't, don't know. know. Yeah, we're, we're waiting. I'll tell you one thing. If there's ever, a, I was recently in uh, Little Italy in New York, uh-huh. and if they ever have a festival down there, we're <laughs> going because that we should all go. Because uh-huh. I'm telling you, those people they eat. Oh yeah, they, right. they, they know how to eat. eat. Yes, we we do a little bit of that ourselves. Yeah. Obviously, we've slowed yeah. down in our old age, but <laughs> believe, it or, <laughs> well, believe it or not, he's right. <laughs> That's right. We yeah. <laughs> and we're, we're going to take uh, one more short pause before uh, the hour of seven o'clock. But we're going to hear about this, and we'll come back and uh, talk one more time with John Falzone, John Rosito, the director's choice over at the Quick Center, the Art Gallery. It's the Walsh Gallery. The Walsh right? Gallery, yeah. right? So uh, director's choice through July sixteenth. Go there. All right. This is eighty-eight point five WVF. Joe Kelly, the Upper Room, and with you until eight o'clock tonight. We've got uh, two special friends here. They're here to talk about. Uh, Various topics, uh, primarily John Rosito, one of the featured artists at Director's Choice, the art exhibit here at the Quick Center, the Walsh Gallery, Diane Mill at the helm, uh, five local artists, and that is running through July 16th. They had a smashing opening reception Father's Day yesterday in the afternoon, and uh, huge attendance there. Incredible right. write-ups in the paper. I know they interviewed you for the for the paper Connecticut Post, and uh, you got to be blown away at times. Right? Oh, I, it's it's just amazing. Uh, but I, just before we, I know we're getting close to the end of the show. I wanted to mention that I'm I'm going to be in the Walsh Gallery again in September, September oh, right, 10th, okay. actually, because I'm I'm involved now with this um, benefit called the Jamie A. Hulley Arts Foundation, and uh, on the 10th they're going to have live music uh, group called uh, Dr. K's Motown Review. And their organization is uh, in memory of Jamie Hulley, who, who unfortunately passed away in 2002 after a brief battle with uh, an aggressive form of lymphoma. And so the, I'm, not, I'm just going to read the mission statement for the, the foundation or the fund. It's uh, the Jamie A. Hulley Fund for the Arts is a nonprofit organization dedicated to the support of young artists who share in Jamie's creative passion and her love of taking artistic risks. Our goal is to provide opportunities for young artists that will help them to expand their artistic talent and to pursue, pursue their dreams, a fitting legacy for Jamie. So uh, that's on September 10th. Again, my art will be displayed in the uh, Walsh Gallery. Right. So, so if that, anyone I likes to come out and I know uh, Judy's a really that. nice lady. Yeah, yeah, her, her right. mother, Judy, Judy Primavera, Primavera. Is a right. <coughs> professor here and a right. wonderful lady and a fellow mentor in the uh, Ignatian Residential College for many years and uh, very dedicated and um, um, just a very dedicated person to this cause. And the, the, the speaking about a person that was so into art as her daughter was and Jamie's name and, and legacy her lives on. Her daughter went to school here? I uh, bel- no, I don't believe she did. Yeah. 
But, but uh, she would uh, gets up. I forget where she went to college. Wesleyan. I think I think w- you're right. Wesleyan. Oh, you might be right. But yeah, now this now this is the ninth. Uh, I believe it. Yeah, ninth annual uh, evening for the arts benefit. So this is the ninth year they're they're holding this. So the Motown Review. Dr. And K's for years, Dr. K's Motown Review will be performing also. So for years they've given <laughs> scholarships in the daughter's name and all these right. things that Judy does right. is for her in her daughter's name and it's a wonderful cause. I've been to when they had a couple of Beatlemania bands. Yeah, yeah, I was just say and it was that, wonderful. Yeah. It right, was wonderful. right. So I'm sure this one's going to be good too. Yeah, there's a there's a bunch person. of annual scholarships, awards, and educational arts programs funded through this. Uh, organization so if anyone just come out and support yeah we'll remind people maybe yeah. you guys can come on uh, right right prior to that artwork yeah. transcends time mm-hmm. because like it takes you look at the artwork you look at is you know you you know we don't go to too many art shows but you look at the artwork you look at the, these famous people well their artwork was from hundreds of years ago but you can still get something from that well, it lives on yeah and when you go to a show like like what we went to the other day right with john and Dwayne and all these people's artwork it transcends <laughs> transcends time and i i believe her her work will also be displayed. Jamie's work. I believe you're right. At, at I believe the, you're right. Uh, she was so. a gifted artist. I've seen yeah. some of her work. She's right. a gifted artist. And well. it's wonderful that her the mom keeps the name going. And so many people have, uh, and you're going to help out. That's right. going to be wonderful because you're going to be helping this right. this benefit. So that's going to be wonderful. So her name will continue to live on and support Walsh other Gallery? people. In the Walsh Gallery. Oh, okay. yep. yeah. And, yeah. and support other artists and um you know, support other people, upcoming artists, right? And promote their work, and and so it's wonderful. Well, it's let's I'm go glad back. You're doing a, it. That's yeah. Wonderful. Let's go back a few years. And we, I know we didn't touch on this about your first interest in in art. Uh, what was what was that like, and what piqued your interest? Well, like I s- like it was in the article in the in the Connecticut Post that uh, I can remember as maybe a, I don't know, even know how old I was, maybe eight, nine, ten years old. My one of my older brothers would would take the Sunday paper and and open it up to the comics, and he would draw the comic strips. Uh-huh. And so I started the same thing, and and it just it started from there. That's my earliest recollection of of doing art, just copying the comic strips out of the out of the newspaper. You still read and the comic strips? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a comic strip myself. <laughs> he hangs around with me, so <laughs> doesn't need the comic strip. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, how about your any other family? I mean, you mentioned uh, <coughs> your kids and and uh, other family members that. Are well, I us. you know even my son was saying it to me the other day. He says, you know, we come from an artistic family. Right. Well, well you know, he's he's into media. My daughter, like I said, and is wife uh, in the TV and movies. Right. Yeah. Right. She works for arts and entertainment television and. She she's she can draw too. She right. doesn't do it very often, but so so there's that that it's in our genes, I it's guess. It's a genes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe so. Your yeah. father was very creative. Your fa- his father was yeah with language, <laughs> which we cannot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to use uh, one of his uh, one of his catchphrases. No, oh, oh, no, no, I don't think we can use any of his catchphrases <laughs> <laughs> between his mother. And, uh, believe it or not, though. Um, both our my mom and his dad had uh, had diabetes, and we saw that. And now recently, John has battled uh, diabetes, type two diabetes, type two. I believe. Yep. And John went at it like the way he does everything else. He put his head down and said, "This is what I'm going to do," right, and he's right. been doing it. He at in the beginning he lost some weight. He watches what he eats, and um, I believe. You know, his art probably helps him also because he gets to concentrate on other things. Right, right. I know his family helps him. I don't help him too much because I always <laughs> want to go off to eat. But um, but um, we've helped each other through different things. He, like I said before, he's helped me a lot more than I've helped him. But this diabetes, he's take it. He took it the way that I always thought he would take it. Well, it's a, it's he's really it's really an epidemic in this country, and uh, it is. you know. Can, can, as type two diabetic, can you ever get off medicine, or is, or is yeah, long? You, can, oh, you can, you yeah. can. Yeah. I, right. I, there are cases where people have reversed it. Right. So uh, you know, it's diet and exercise. Right. They right. hear it all the time, and and I think exercise is a huge part of it because if I if down. I have something to eat that's not really good for my condition, 
if I go for a 15, 20 minute walk, it's it's dissipated, and oh, you know really? the, yeah. you, you'll you'll burn it off. So right. it, it, exercise. If anybody out there is listening that has diabetes type two, go and exercise. I mean, it's it's something that's going to change your life. Right, right. So and you're, you you guys are always out walking, doing your thing. Yeah, well, yeah. like everything else, you check with your doctor, obviously. But um, I, but it's one of those things. Even with multiple sclerosis, they mm-hmm. tell you now, you know, if your doctor says that your heart is strong enough to walk or swim, right. I'm sure diabetes swimming would help that and, and any um, any form of exercise. We were always know? active, right? But you think it, as you get older, you're not as active as you were. But I've often said I'm just as fast now running the bases as I was when I was 22. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. And he's <laughs> it, so he knows that I was the slowest. What was that? They used to time you with a calendar? Yes, you did. Yeah, that's it. Yes, you did. Uh, and, I was, <laughs> and, and I was in one softball game where the lady goes, I don't mind that you run with a piano on your back. I just don't mind when you stop and play it. So, <laughs> so I, I always had, the lady really said that to me, which is really nice. Yeah. <laughs> what was her name? Uh, I know her. I'm not going to say. Right. I'm not gonna say hey, uh, but one of the final <laughs> things, I, I saw that Mary Lou Henner piece about remembering every day of your life. Oh, yeah, yeah right, last right. night, there's 60 Minutes? Yeah, there's yeah, some yeah. people out there that can remember every single day of their life. Right. I could never handle that. Because yeah, there's some things that he's Hawaii. done that I probably wouldn't be his friend now. And <laughs> yeah, no, no, true. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <that's laughs> right. You think about it. No, you, you know. Yeah. Right. That, no, but that's, I that's do pretty that. strange that's that, that these people have such a memory that they She was I, an Olympic. She was wonderful. She was in the Olympics. Right. Um, yeah, so parallel, all those gymnastics, I think it was. No, no, that's no, we're talking about uh, the woman that was on. Uh, taxi. No, I think that was the girl who hit Nancy. What she rigged thinking? Nancy, oh, uh, about Nancy the, Kerrigan, the uh, smashing her no, leg. No, 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 you know which one I'm thinking of that other lady. She's on taxi, right? Taxi, yeah. yeah. I wasn't thinking of her, I was thinking of the lady. I was thinking well, of Mary Lou, Mary Lou Retton, yeah, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Mary Lou Henner, Henner, yeah, was a good um, she was on Broadway. She was oh, very, yeah, good. yeah, I messed that up completely. Yeah, right. we, ju- the, 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 <laughs> we just lost somebody from Taxi, right? Yes. And that actor that was Oh, yeah, played Jeff Conway, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, right. Yes. alcohol and yeah. drugs. And yeah. yeah, that's wow. too bad. Yeah. And we so lost we a, uh, a famous uh, musician. Soccer. Yeah, right? the big man, Clarence yeah, Clemens. Yeah. yeah, 69 of uh, complications from a stroke. Uh, Absolutely. The E Street Band, Bruce Springsteen. And, and John Rosito says you have to play some Clarence Clemens right. on the oh. way out into the night but before i want to thank you guys great friends of mine in the show and john rosito and john falzone are, you guys are always welcome to come by oh thanks. thank you john. thanks yeah. for having thank us you. it's good to yeah. be with you yeah and and thanks for the meal again yeah no problem you know great special chicken we'll do it again i'll, I'll come up with something else you know maybe some lasagna next time or who knows you know? wow oh, that's my favorite you know, yeah oh my goodness yeah, we had some you know because what was oh we had the spaghetti what was it spaghetti no it wasn't spaghetti but we had pasta and meatballs and right right the, yes. yeah now was this the first was the time. chicken right so yeah. now we'll you know we'll we'll think of something and, and I want to thank you guys for upgrading the guest quality of my show oh, oh thank, well, you. thank you yeah. thank you much. yeah thank you very much I hope you mean it no no <laughs> no I do I do because I think you were I afraid do. that we yeah. were going to bring it down but no 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 I, I some I, people might think that yeah yeah I do appreciate you asking us back. Yeah, so uh, go please check out Director's Choice at the Quick Center, the Walsh Gallery. You can go right in the lobby. You can ask the info desk. Someone is there. But if you walk in, it's to the left. And uh, it is uh, Director's Choice, five local artists, among them uh, John Rosito, uh, Dwayne Corey, Anthony Santomoro, Frank and Stefan Buda. And I think that That's covers it. it. And yep. Thanks to Diane Mill, Diana oh, Mill, for outstanding. Yeah, it's and Chuck DeAngelis. Right, right. And uh, John Falzone and John Rosito. Yeah, they put it together.